since there are, we already know that um, we already use that a lot, we don't need to re-implement all these algorithms. Uh, but here I just show some demos how each algorithm behaves differently on the synthetic data set we had before. Again, we are using the tiny one, but zero point, but now we're using 0 0.1 for the first dimension, which is make the two dimensions much different to each other, which make the optimization method much harder. Uh, second of all, we didn't change two times x2 squared. So firstly, this is a gradient descent, and that's normal. Uh, we can show the gradient descent, and if we choose a linear rate uh, equals to 0 0.4, remember this number, we better use it. Um, the convergence rate is a little bit, suffer a little bit, it's a little bit too large for the gradient descent. Like it suffer a little bit um, here. Now let's look at uh, the momentum. The momentum is pretty easy. Um, we have the vel velocity variable for first dimension, second dimension, and using the gamma, we predefine the gamma. And velocity equals the definition we have. This is gradients uh, times the learning rate times the gamma times the uh, past the velocity. And then return the velocity, but uh, we update the x1, x2 by the velocity variable. So that's the implementation of momentum. And here, we didn't change the learning rate eta. Eta is still 0 0.4. By using uh, like uh, roughly a middle range of gamma, 0 0.5. Now you can see that the progress is more, much more consistent. The first one, we, the first time step, we didn't change anything because momentum is zero. But the second time step, in the SGD, we just move to another direction. But now, we kind of didn't change so rapidly. We changed a little bit, but not so rapidly. The third one, still because the gradients goes this direction, we smooth it, but we ch don't change completely, we just change a little bit. Now, similar thing here is make the, it's kind of a smooth of this curve we had before. Okay? And let me show, maybe show different gamma. Let me show how it works. Let me run that. Like, uh, now that's too smooth. Okay? And because that's too smooth, because the, the still like the net rate is too large, the, surf, the gradient change a lot. If you make it too smooth, then you lost the direction. If I make a smaller one, like, um, this actually makes sense. You don't smooth too much. You still like uh, once you get once this is lucky that in the third time step we reach out to a very good area. You don't change too much. Go this way so that you get a good area. You converge pretty fast. Okay. And how about the larger learning rate? Like using eta equal to zero point. Let me change back uh, gamma. Um, still using gamma here. So now we increase the learning rate from zero point four to zero point six. You can see the gradient descent actually diverges. It's too large. It diverges at the end. Oh, that's too bad. And how about momentum? The same learning rate but still using mod modular size gamma, actually momentum works pretty well. Okay, so again, it's smooth, um, it's smooth update at the end area is the smoothness because at the nearby the optimal point, the area pretty flat and smooth, uh, make, uh, you don't just uh, pass all this optimal point, so make it didn't diverge at the end. Okay. So how about other grad? Other grad, we have uh, epsilon, the g1, g2, and s1 equal to the g1 squared, x2 equals s2 equals to g2 squared, and to update, we have s1 plus the epsilon and make a square root and time uh, divided by the learning rate and times the gradients. So that is the other grad. Now we use the same learning rate. 0.4, you can see that, well, it's pretty smooth, but at the end, it's converged pretty slow. Because the other grad, when you use other grad, we apply a linear rate decay 
uh, naturally, so which make the progress is pretty slow at the end. Okay, to fix it, you need to use a very large learning rate. So here, example, with learning rate eta equals to two. Remember, eta equal to 0 0.6 already diverge, make the SGD diverge, also make the momentum kind of suffer a little bit. But now, for other grad, we can use a very large learning rate eta equals to two. Okay, this is a good thing about other grad, which is less sensitive to the learning rate. And you can even have a large one at the beginning. But the problem is that it suffers a little bit at the end. Then how about MS prop? Like, uh, it's very similar to other grad. The only thing you have gamma and y minus gamma here make a moving average. And you can see that, again, eta equal to 0 0.4, go back to the original one. Gamma equal to 0 0.9, which is, um, pay a lot of, it's very smooth version. So you can see that converge pretty fast, and even at the end, it's converge pretty fast. Comparing to, okay, comparing to this one, it doesn't have any progress at the end. Okay? This is because IMS prop doesn't decay the learning rate too much. And also, because the problem have the first dimension is much smaller, the second dimension is 20 times faster or larger, um, IMS prop make normalized the two dimensions make the, uh, the coverage is really pretty smooth. Okay, so finally, uh, we don't have finally actually, Adam, Adam, is, Adam have two variables I, I oh well, I, I, I didn't implement here, but we have used that a lot in the lecture, I can skip it, but Adam, because that's a simple problem, and IMS prop already, already converged pretty good, um, I didn't show Adam here, but for these simple algorithms, Adam works very similar to each other. Okay? Any questions? But that's a very simple example. That's a 2D example. In, in reality, it's pretty complex. You cannot rely on, like, give you some uh, intuition here, uh, but you cannot use uh, this one for to guide all this real-time workload. 